Hello everyone, JD here, and I hope you are doing well. Today I have a really cool build for you that I was able to show off in a tournament uh, to actually help secure a win over this past weekend in the uh, Gens Before Friends tournament. I had a lot of fun doing it, and I brought this build in and I thought it worked really, really well. Um, especially because this is my first taste of getting tournament matches uh, and being able to see what builds that I had previously considered really, really overpowered, uh, how they worked in a tournament setting. So for you today, uh, I'm going to go over the build here very quickly, and then we're going to go through the actual tournament match itself, which I have recorded, and I will walk you through my thought process, why I did everything, how I played this build, and then at the end of it, uh, I'm going to explain how I think the survivors uh, could have beaten it, and uh, maybe what they could have done to avoid losing. Uh, still, pretty cool build, uh, so I think you guys will enjoy this one. The first thing we have is Devour Hope. Now, Devour Hope and Lifeguard Whistle are the basis of this build on Demogorgon. Uh, this add-on and this perk combination uh, form the most one of the most devastating 1-2 combos uh, in the game, and everything around this build is just there to support it. So you've also got Undying and Thrill of the Hunt, to make sure that Devour Hope uh, can almost not ever be cleansed. And then you've got Red Moss and Infectious Fright as means of uh, finding out information, uh, making sure that there are not survivors nearby um, that you would otherwise maybe let sw slip away. Because once you become extremely lethal with your third stack of Devour Hope, um, if they're nearby, they're basically done for. Especially if it's in the mid-game of the match and they've already removed some pallets and stuff like that. Uh, Red Moss is not really necessary, which is kind of funny to think that this iridescent add-on that I was allowed to run in the tournament uh, was actually not really all that powerful considering the rest of the build. Um, but it's really good for having information, and it pairs well with uh, with Infectious Fright because you can have vision on survivors basically across the map uh, when you're not sure where they are, and nearby you when you are actually really ready to capitalize on the lethality that Devour Hope provides you. So uh, with that said, let's get into the gameplay. Alrighty, so uh, let's take a look at the game itself. In this tournament, uh, basically everything was allowed. There were, there were very few exceptions. There was like no iridescent heads, no nurse add-ons. Uh, but for the most part, if you wanted to bring uh, huge med kits with anti-hemorrhagic syringes, you could do that. Uh, there are only two perks banned um, on the survivor side, uh, Circle of Healing and Unbreakable, which might have actually been kind of misplays on my part to ban them because they're not really... Um, very useful against this build, but we'll get into that. So let's uh, let's go ahead and start the game. So we're gonna load up here on Grim Pantry, which is not a bad one. It's uh, uh, a relatively, well, I want to say it's a relatively small map. It can be kind of annoying for some killers, but considering the mobility that we have uh, with demo, it's pretty good. Anyways, here we have our first totem, and one of the big downsides on this map is that your totem spawns can be really bad. That one right there is pretty constant. Survivors will almost always know that they can go there to look for a totem uh, if they need to find one. Uh, this one is much better, so we put a portal there. And right now in the early game, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get portals down in front of our totems. That's the big thing. If a survivor goes and finds our totem at the very beginning of the game and then breaks it, that can spell disaster for us later on in the game. Because then, instead of having to do uh, three, uh, three totems while they're under pressure and having to rescue their friends and stuff like that, that was just me not being super warmed up on demo and missing the, uh, the charge time. But anyways... Uh, if they get one of those totems out of the way early, that makes our build just a, a lot weaker in a way that we don't want it to be. Um, but all we were trying to do there was pressure the uh, survivors off the generator, make them think that we're doing uh, some chasing and stuff like that. And now that we've got portals in front of all of our gens, we can not only get information with Red Moss, uh, but we can make sure that they're not going to be... Um, hardcore rushing our totems. So now we can actually start getting pressure on generators and survivors and there we go you can already see that one generator has gone so that's a little bit of the downside the setup can be a little bit slow sort of like trapper sort of like hag um but considering the payoff that these traps have it's pretty worth it uh, i'm not sure why uh, we just kind of made an assumption and thought that the claudette would be a little bit easier to chase instead of the david that dropped down maybe not the correct assumption but uh you know we'll, 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 we'll live with it and we're just trying to play this pallet here which really shouldn't be that difficult to play <laughs> All I'm trying to do is just make sure that I get it down there because, again, it's not a, it's not an easy pallet for survivors to play. Um, and the important thing is that I get hooks. Once I get three hooks, this game really, really, really gets hard for survivors. But all I, I was okay with taking a couple extra seconds just to make sure that I got the down here. Perfect. 
And because I have portals left over, I just go ahead, went ahead and threw one down there. Um, they will be coming there, and actually that portal will let me know that survivors, when the survivors are going to rescue, uh, because of the lifeguard whistle, which tells you when survivors walk over a portal, even though you can't manually do anything. You can't manually trigger uh, the of the abyss ability by yourself. That was just me trying to figure out which survivor I could grab. I went for the one on the opposite side of the gen. I figured maybe she would be um, assuming that I would go for the other girl. Didn't quite work, but now we've got a lot of pressure, and this David is not in a place where he can do a whole heck of a lot. He didn't have dead hard, which I thought was weird, uh, but that's perfect, because now we've got one stack of Devour Hope and a down, and we can just throw him on this hook right here and then get the heck out of dodge. Pop this, just, uh, just so they don't come back and finish it immediately, because I don't want them going too fast. And I tried to set up to uh, get into that portal over there, but they actually cleansed it. That's okay, though. Gives us that portal back, and uh, it wasn't necessary. It wasn't really defending anything, uh, and it wasted their time. Like, that really wasn't going to give me... Traveling there wasn't going to help me for the rest of the game, it, most likely, so they did me a favor, really. Right. Now that we found this Nancy to chase, we can go after her and then try to do something. Uh, playing Shaq could be a bit problematic, but we've already got two people on hook, so as long as... Sorry, we've already got our second person on hook, so as long as we stay outside of that 32 meter range um, to let a Devour Hope stack go by, we should be good. That, I wasn't quite sure of the distance, so I didn't want to go for it. And then we're going to play, try to play this pallet. This pallet, I could have done better, but it's pretty safe. Either I go from the right side and break the pallet and she gets out, or I go from the left side and she just has so much time that she's never going to actually be able to get hit. So you can see that right there. And now they're at three generators. They're actually at two generators. Uh, because they focus on them pretty hard. So now we're in a situation that you would normally consider losing. But that's just me being careful, making sure there's no dead hard. There's an infectious fright. We know that they're not going to go for a save of any kind because they don't have flashlights and they're currently running away. That's good info. Uh, it also means that there's no one who's going to be camping the unhook and just getting it right as soon as we, uh, as soon as we hook her, which is important. Now we can fuck off, get information from Red Moss, which is very good. Uh, we don't have barbecue or anything, so Red Moss actually tells us that there's a girl down here that we can start chasing. And that should uh, be enough to get us enough pressure to lead us into the end game, even though it's pretty early on. Now, I didn't have, I didn't use my uh, my basic attack there, <laughs> because I, uh, I thought she would drop the pallet sooner, and then I don't know why that didn't hit. That was just kind of weird. Um... But we can actually avoid letting them know that we have Devour Hope by using Shred. And that's just, like, kind of a cherry on top. The fact that the Demogorgon can um, avoid telling survivors that you have Devour Hope is awesome. Unfortunately, they know now because, well, I used my M1 because I thought that she was just going to keep continuing on. And if I tried to Shred there, she was going to stun me. So I would rather get the down here than uh, try to keep them from knowing about Devour Hope. Why? Because we have such a good ability to pressure these. We have Thrill of the Hunt, so it takes them a lot longer to be able to cleanse the totem. And now that we're approaching here, yeah, all we have to do is do that. And We knew that even with being, even with having to hook the other survivor, uh, she was never going to have enough time. Okay, that hit did not register, but that's okay. Now we can go ahead and start playing this. And we know that there's someone on our, t on our totem. So we're just going to throw down uh, this portal here and head on over to this one. We really could have just started walking over there, but we have portals to spare, so it's all right by me. We're going to get this out of the way, and she's going to throw the pallet early because she knows that we have Devour Hope, so that's okay. I don't know. <laughs> I forget why I, I have their auras there. It's very odd, but because I know that they're there, they can't really... The two of them together can't really loop this, and we can hit this girl with the shred here and get so much more pressure. So they didn't, the fact that they didn't know where we were um, was, uh, sorry, the fact that they didn't know that we knew where they were meant that we were actually able to get insane value there. I think that might have been them being near an undying totem. Yeah. And then they start working on this, and then as soon as they hear me coming through the portal, they can't. They can't work on it anymore, and I don't even have to worry about leaving those two survivors down because... All that really matters is that they're not doing my totems. If I give up a totem, then maybe that's good for me. Maybe I get two downs, but can they later on spare a down for a totem? Can they do that twice? And if they do, then uh, the game's basically over. Then then they've basically won. So I was okay with going to the totem that they were working on and chasing. And hey, because we put that portal down, we know that they're, uh, they're over there. 
And I'm just going to use this middle one because it's a little bit closer. Yep, there's more undying value. Now, this doesn't bring us anywhere close to anyone, but uh, we get the red moss value, so uh, that's okay in our book. This is going to be a little bit of chasing here, just kind of uh, figuring out where they're going, making sure that they're corralled. Uh, they're in a part of the map where generators aren't being done. We know because of red moss and because of lifeguard whistle that they're not anywhere where they're working on generators. So the game has slowed down to an absolute standstill. Uh, that was a little bit of auto aim right there. I figured that she might uh, have uh, borrowed time, and she did, but... Because we couldn't find out where the other person went, I just went after her anyways. Uh, in a normal match, you would consider this, like, you know, kind of bad form, going after someone who's just been unhooked. But uh, in a tournament match, you want as much pressure as possible. You want your downs as quick as possible. And so I was okay with uh, pressuring her a little bit. And we actually caught her cleansing the, 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 the portal, which is kind of a smart thing. If, she can, if you can get away with cleansing the portal first, then I don't have information on when the totem's being done, so... Uh, not a bad plan, but I don't think it was executed super well. And by this point, we already have five stacks of Devour, so as soon as someone gets downed, uh, it's game over for them. And now, because we have five stacks of Devour, and because we got the kill, now there's a it's a 1v3. They don't have generator pressure. This game is basically uh, basically over. We're going to see the exact same thing here. He tries to come over here, cleanse the, uh, the portal. Because again, they don't know that I have thrill of the hunt undying maybe if they're really smart then they'll figure that uh the totem takes longer to cleanse but all they know about is that one totem so they they just know that they have to go for it unfortunately for them it's not really going to help because i've got undying but you can see you can see what it does to survivors it puts them in such a bad spot and these last two survivors have actually done the smart thing in this situation knowing that i have all of the lethality in the world knowing that they will die as soon as they are downed um they just start working on generators and that that is we'll we'll talk about that later on but th that's what you have to do in this situation and if they'd done that if they'd done that a little bit earlier uh who knows maybe the game changes just a little bit maybe they get someone out but as it is we're just going to chase this girl down we have infectious fright to tell us that uh the claudette is over there so, because this is a tournament match and it is entirely based on how many kills we get, uh, not hook states, not anything else, uh, the most important thing for us is to go for the to kill. And we time the shred well. She's going to drop it because she doesn't want... Uh, she's a little bit too afraid. She doesn't want us to hit her. We were too far away for, uh, to hit her, so she actually probably would have been better off just continuing to run, and then maybe she could use that pallet afterwards. Um... But she did get to this pallet because of that, which is okay for her. This is a, kind of a hard one for me to play with my shred because you can see I'm losing distance every time I do that. So I can't really catch up with her and then shred her um, in a way that forces her to drop the pallet early so that I can shred it. So uh, she does get some value out of that. And maybe that wouldn't be uh, a very good use of our time if this was in the earlier game. But because this is the end game, and we've already got two people dead and a third person on the ground. We can basically just take all the time in the world that we need to ensure that she's not going to go pick up her friend and then maybe extend this out a little bit. Uh, but because we know that the other girl uh, is still recovering on the ground because of Infectious Fright, we're going to hook her here. That way, even if the hatch spawns under her feet, she doesn't have enough time uh, to get it because the Claudette still has to take about 10 or 15 seconds to die on the hook, and we can just go ahead and use our censored uh, Devour Hope Mori here. <laughs> Sorry for the bad angle there, but uh, that kind of is what it is. And then there you go. And, uh, There's the 4K. That is G yeah, and then I turned my microphone off. Or I turned my microphone back on after that. So, uh, yeah, there's the game. And uh, let's get... Actually, yeah, no, I'll just go into the, the, the overview right now. So, the survivors did pretty well, actually, considering where G they... Uh, that Considering that they really didn't have any sort of uh, information on what I was going to be running or why. Uh as you could see, they couldn't get a single one of my totems out of the way. And part of that was because we had what ended up being a favorable map for totems. Uh, if I only had one totem on this map, say it was just the Devour Hope, say it was just a Ruin, um, you know, there's always the chance that they just break it straight away, and that sucks. But because we had Undying, Thrill of the Hunt, and Devour, um, even the one totem that they knew about, it was so well protected, um, especially because we had Lifeguard Whistle, uh, that they just couldn't get through it. So, um, 
ordinarily, I think if you're a killer or if you're a survivor and there's a Demogorgon who has a totem, you don't think they're going to be running this exact build. So it kind of makes sense to try to go for it. Uh, but once they realized I had Devour Hope, uh, they basically had to go full tilt into doing one thing that I think is the way to beat this build. Uh, and that is just rushing the absolute shit out of generators. That's the way you beat most killers that rely on any sort of setup. Um, like I said, Trapper, Hag, some stuff like that. Because I needed to go around the map and uh, put down portals in front of the totems, I had a little bit of time where at the beginning of the match where I was not actively harassing survivors. You saw a generator pop pretty early, and once the Vower Hope was, uh, was shown, which you can also do a better job of hiding by being really religious with only shredding survivors um and because if you if you kill someone and they're not expecting it then like that sends them into yeah, that, that sends them into chaos but they knew that i had devour hope they kind of figured that they couldn't do it so just rushing generators and getting those done and then forcing an end game scenario where it's just can can they get the gates open before i can find them um that is really the the, the best that i can hope for the best that they can hope for. And, you know, they, they they sort of got close. They had generator progress on the last two generators, but uh, we were able to pull it out. So um, that is, I think, a really good example of how strong this build can be. Um, uh, if you uh, weren't paying close attention, they brought in, and you're, you can't see because the end game screen is cut off here, but uh, they had four really strong med kits, so they had really good healing builds, which this absolutely counters. Uh, as long as you can chain your chases well enough together to get the first three downs um without like a ton of problems without letting them just like go off and heal somewhere uh this will completely counter and nullify healing builds uh because they're exposed the whole time so what are their med kits gonna do they're gonna make it so that they can't use dead heart and that's that's pretty much it so uh, as long as you do a good job of defending your totems getting kills or getting downs in the early game and again it doesn't matter who so you can take advantage of survivors who might be a little altruistic and take chase uh, to prevent a survivor that's already been on hook. Um, it doesn't matter in this case because all you need is those three hooks and then getting those stacks of devour. So um, that's going to about wrap it up from this discussion on this build. Uh, go ahead and try it out in games and let me know what you think. Uh, I apologize in advance to any survivor mains who might go against this because of anyone who sees it. But uh, this is a really fun build to try and something that uh, if you can get away with it in a tournament, uh, can be really strong, I think, even at uh, even at higher levels of play. Again, the red moss was helpful, but that was like the only thing that's like iridescent level. If there's no purple add-ons, then obviously this build is a lot harder because you don't get the uh, that ability. But yeah, uh, try it out. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be it for me today. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic day. As always, I hope you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.